Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel My PhD Life. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, hit the red subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. If you enjoy the videos, then please hit the like button as that is the algorithm that helps me reach out to more people and continue on my science outreach initiative. Hi guys. <laughs> I thought to do something new for welcoming you back to my channel. This is Navjot Kaur and you're back to my PhD life. My motto with this channel has been to talk a lot about PhD life, PhD programs, lives of graduate students, different kinds of careers people can pursue in the fields of science and research and talk about many many different and exciting fields of science and the kind of research people have been doing in them. And as I was sitting and reflecting back on my PhD experience, I ventured into my memories from my first semester and the first year of the PhD program. And I started thinking about the tough days I had had at that time and the kind of time and energy it took me to get settled into the new institute, the new environment, a new program, which was really tough and challenging. And I thought it will be nice and important to talk to existing students who might be going through something similar or might have gone through something similar and overcome it and might relate to what I am going to share today. And also for prospective students and their families to understand what fresh PhD uh, scholars or graduate students might go through. We could all then help each other in uh, the tough times that we face as researchers, as budding researchers who are just getting into the field. And families could also understand, you know, what kind of pressures their kids might be handling and how they could support them to handle them better. One of the first things that I realized soon after I got into the hostel and started my life as a graduate student at IISC in India was that I was pretty far away from home for the first time. I am a North Indian who has lived most of her life in the northern part of the country. I had been to the south once or twice for tourism purposes but I hadn't really lived uh, for a really long period in south. So when I went to a different part of the country and similarly if you're planning to do a PhD from abroad then you're going to go to a different part of the world and this is valid to international students coming from any part of the world and going to different parts of the world for their studies. Uh, things are not going to be as they used to be at, in your hometown and that is not something new that you know I have brought to your attention. You know that already and you'll probably have experienced that in your bachelor's itself when students move out uh, to hostels for their studies or when you moved out of home to join the first job and similar other opportunities. So it's going to be the same uh, sort of uh, unsettling experience that I went through when I went to the hostel and it was a completely new setting for me. I had never been so far from my house uh, until that point of time and hence I hadn't realized how I would feel in that kind of a setting. So I used to be really sad and homesick for the initial I would say two to four months of the program and it was a really tough phase emotionally because those were the feelings that I was experiencing for the first time and since I was a day scholar in my bachelor's that experience got delayed for me otherwise I could have sort of experienced it earlier but nonetheless, uh, if you are going to a different part of the world, especially, uh, I mean, going to a country which is different from your native country, then the experience might be even more shocking in the beginning. And what would work best, I think, would be to stay in touch with your family, communicate to them that you miss them, talk to them. And I also encourage families to understand this uh, shock that students go through and also not bog them every few hours asking them if you're doing okay, did you eat? Because that also uh, becomes irritating for kids at that age, especially if they went, if they went out of home after bachelors. But uh, staying in touch and expressing the emotions that you're going through was one thing that helped me manage the stress that had come up in my life at that time. The other thing that happens with moving out of the house is cultural shock and food shock, as I like to say. 
बिकॉज डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री एस्पेशली इन इंडिया कुक फूड वेरी डिफरेंटली एंड देन इफ यू आर गोइंग टू डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड देन द स्टोरी कुड बी यू नो द डिफरेंसिस कुड बी इवन मोर मैग्निफाइड एंड यू वुडन गेट दैट होम कुक माँ के प्यार वाला खाना एट दोज प्लेसेज एंड दैट इज समथिंग ऑल्सो दैट आई स्ट्रगल विद फॉर अ वाइल which also uh, led to weight loss and uh, not such a good health in the first semester that i had in my phd program i encourage students to be sensitive of this fact and i wasn't really choosy but uh, the kind of spices and the kind of cooking that was or the kind of cooked food that was being served in the mess wasn't really suiting my gut that well so be sensitive to this fact no basic cooking skills which could help you you know make something refreshing over the weekends to change your mood and find options there'll there'll always be somewhere where you could find something that you like but yeah you can't go to a restaurant every day to eat out so it's important to be sensitive of this fact and even when you're at home don't be very choosy with your mom and try to develop a versatile uh, palate <laughs> so that you can uh, enjoy foods from different uh, settings of the world Another tough experience that I had to handle was a tinge of racism because I was going from the north part of the country to the south and I could be easily distinguished because of the color of my skin and I had a few unfortunate episodes where I had to handle rude behavior from people or rude language or getting you know being ignored and ill treated by people because of the color of my skin and that happens both ways i know of people from the south suffering same issues in the north so the only thing i could i can tell you in this is that you have to handle it and i think the best way to handle it is to handle it, handle it gracefully there's no point getting in argument with people because if they knew or if they could understand this they would have been behaving the way they have been that also doesn't mean that you don't stick up to your point and just bend your head down and move around but be cautious be uh, judicious and wise in handling such situations a major professional shock that i had to uh, face and handle when i joined the phd program was the level of academics and the style of academics that i was exposed to when i joined iisc uh, i did my bachelor's from punjab university and most of the bachelor's program in india are such that you are given a described curriculum and you follow that for the four years of your program there are some places which have now become more interesting and give options to choose your electives and move to different departments within the university or campus to do different types of courses that you would like to do but that was not the case at punjab university but when i moved to the indian institute of science that was exactly the case where students could go to any department and take courses of their choice so i could be a chemical engineer but take courses in computer science electronics nano science biology management you say it and you could do it and that also meant that in the same class for a particular subject you would have students from all different departments now i could be a chemical engineer sitting in the class of say a subject from computer science and you could also have undergrads masters and phd students sitting in the same class and that also makes a very heterogeneous group of students taking the same course and since everyone has different background different expertise and different level of education everyone would perform differently in the same class and sometimes a bachelor's student could be answering questions that you couldn't even understand being a phd scholar and that was something that i was exposed to the first time and in the beginning was really challenging because the bad thing that i did was that i started comparing myself with the undergrads and the master student and i started thinking that am i good enough to be in a phd program because there are things that an undergrad can answer but i can and it took me time to understand that they were undergrads from iisc so they were exposed to that environment for the past 2 to 3 years and they were taking courses of that academic level for those 3 years while i wasn't exposed to such rigor earlier and that understanding and that appreciation uh, came a little later at i i would say around the mid of the first semester so the first 
two two and a half months were really tough because academics was tough the coursework was tough in addition to that that i made it tougher for myself by adding all this unwanted extra pressure so if you're going to a new place and you feel that the level of academics and the style of academics is really different and you need time to cope up give yourself that time and space and do not fall into the trap that i did and don't compare yourself with other students in your class with all these things going on with me in the first semester where i would say i wasn't as mature myself at that time i had tough academics to handle there were tons of assignments tough coursework which i wasn't able to understand in the beginning i started comparing myself to others in the class and added a lot of unnecessary pressure onto myself in addition to that i started uh i went on to a trail of self doubt where i started pondering if i took the right decision of enrolling into the phd program i was working at that time and with a good gate rank i had also gotten uh, some offers from psus and i thought maybe i did a mistake of not taking those jobs and getting into the phd program and if it is going to be worth it i am already crying my eyes out every other day because of something or the other that happens and all of this built a lot of pressure and uh sadness in my life most of which was i would say created by my own thoughts and my own actions and i could have avoided them by being more positive and that is one of the reasons that i am sharing my story with you to tell you that these are the kind of challenges you might also face and the way to address them is to first no self doubt there would have been some particular reasons that you have would have strongly thought about because of which you joined the phd program believe in those reasons and believe in yourself and i fortunately found really nice mentors and seniors who reiterated these thoughts in me at that point which i am sharing with you today and sort of help me build confidence in myself start focusing on the coursework and solving problems and figuring out what kind of food i like how can i manage it and how can i what can i pick and choose from the mess food to you know satiate my hunger and that's how i started taking baby steps and uh, building my life as a phd scholar another thing that i struggled with initially was finding the right set of friends i think that because i was already too stressed with the load of the coursework me not being able to match the levels self doubting and thinking am i good enough not finding the right food missing my family a lot with all this going in my head i wasn't really the real me that made it difficult for me to connect with people and also for people to approach me and you know make friendships uh this is something natural that happens to us when we are sad or disappointed we start to close and we start communicating less and we become less affable and that only damages us because you know we actually need people at that time who could support us and get us out of those situations so as i started taking those baby steps at work and course work and you know doing subjects better i also started opening myself up a little more uh, talking to people in the mess uh, talking to my peers in the department and other classes which i was taking as part of the course work and slowly i started making good friends if my story is rang a bell in your head then you probably have had uh, similar experiences at work either as a graduate student or as a professional in your particular line of work and i hope you had found similar ways of uh, handling such situations if you are a fresh graduate student and if you are in those first two months of your course and have started to struggle with similar issues i hope my conversations help you relax a bit and feel and know that you know there are many many students who go through this and the kind of solutions or, or, or the options that i shared with you about what i did wrong and right uh, in such situations help you manage your situations as well let me know in the comment section if you found the video useful if there were things that could help you manage your stressful situations better go pursue your passion for science and all these things will be taken care of just be conscious communicate 
and enjoy my videos hope to see you soon take care bye